What's going on YouTube? Wild Lion Games here and the first deep dive video for Super Mega Baseball 4 was just dropped and Scott from Metalhead Studios spilled all the beans. Okay, well, maybe not all the beans, but they did provide a good amount of information. If you look at the details of what's going on and not necessarily what's being said, we can answer a lot of questions that they didn't even talk about in the video. So let's jump into those first and then get to what they talked about in the video, right? So once again, I'm gonna talk about the facts, about what's said in the video and what is revealed visually. And then I'm gonna touch on those video topics as well. First up is team chemistry and the new player traits. Now, how team chemistry works with traits wasn't talked about in this video, but if you study different, like if you pause at different moments in the video, you can figure it out. So as we know, facts, right? 55 new traits were added this uh, this year for Super Mega Baseball 4, up to 75 player traits available for all the players. And now this new feature that's been added in is team chemistry. And one of the questions is how is team chemistry and the player traits uh, going to interact and mingle with each other as a game feature? So how it works is team chemistry is broken down into five different categories, again, this wasn't revealed, but if we pause the screen at different moments throughout the video, we can reveal all five categories of team chemistry. We have scholarly, we have disciplined, competitive, spirited, and crafty. Now, what these mean, I'm not exactly sure because again, they didn't go over it. So uh, what all those categories mean for team chemistry will uh, be revealed in a future deep dive video. I'm not sure which one, of course, now you'll notice that player traits don't necessarily equal the same category as team chemistry. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. If you look here, we can see team chemistry and trait potency. It seems that if you have two or less players with a certain chemistry type, it only provides like a single potency boost. Now I'm calling this a point. I don't know what they're referring it to it to this as. I don't know how strong this uh, potency boost is we can just tell by like the single arrow that they're getting a slight boost. Now, if you have three to six players within a given team chemistry that receives two potency boosts for any of the traits that those players have. And then if you have seven to eight players within that same chemistry arc, their traits receive a really strong boost of three points. Again, I'm just saying points because we're getting the three arrows. Now on the reverse side, it also appears that these negative traits will receive a really strong potency boost if you don't have a lot of players with that chemistry. So two players with uh, one of the chemistries on your roster, if they have a negative trait in that category, they're going to or if they have a negative trait as a player and they fit into that team chemistry category, you're going to see a really big effect of those negative traits because they're going to be those effects are going to be greatly increased. So let's take a look at drafting Chuck Noblock here. We can see he is a competitive team chemistry with a positive trait rally starter and a negative trait wild thrower. Right now, this team only has two guys on the roster in the competitive chemistry. Adding him would be a third player as shown by that green icon. So his rally starter trait would actually end up seeing a boost of two, but his negative trait of a wild thrower would also see a boost of two. And what's just what's really great about this is the fact that the UI and UX design in this game is so clean and so good that we're able to figure this out and figure out traits and chemistry without it even being explained. So when it comes to making a, re a review of this game, you already know my notes on UI UX is going to be really good. Moving on, more legends revealed. If we pause this screen here, we can read some of the MLB legends in the free agency pool, such as Nolan Ryan, Tom, Tommy John, Tom Seaver. Keith Folk, and much more like Jose Cruz. They also talked about pennant race and how they keep legends in the game while maintaining the competitive value of online pennant race. So how the team is navigating this, which I think is pretty cool, is you use the MLB legends as ringers. So, you know, when the pennant race resets and you're, uh, and you're picking your team, you get a pool of some MLB legends that you can also then basically sub in for a player on your roster. So, for example, if we examine this screen here, we have the option to swap out Scooter for Big Poppy. We could take a look at our team chemistry, both players' chemistry, and how adding and subtracting them would affect our results. In a situation like this, I would say that swapping out for Big Poppy would be the right move. But if we look at this screen here with Jose Cruz and Roy Crowds, 
I think possibly keeping your Super Mega League player, Roy Crowds, would be the smarter move based on the team chemistry and his trade of the inside pitch getting that nice boost. So they did touch on franchise mode very briefly. They didn't get into it. They just talked about it and approached it. And I got to say, it does seem pretty interesting. And I think the gamers that are against and very adamantly against the addition of MLB Legend in the game, rest assured, when it comes to elimination, season, and franchise mode, you'll be able to see that you can actually play all three of those without any MLB Legends. You can play with the classic teams, with the classic players and the right rosters. You can also play with only MLB Legends on their fake teams. And then you can also have custom leagues with the mix of the two. And they didn't get into customization at all, but I can imagine we're going to see similar features such as, you know, creating the season length, how many teams are going to be in the league. And then also with the new shuffle draft, they did talk about shuffle draft a bit. Uh, it sounds like what's, what's going to happen is, let's say you want to play with like the original players and the original teams of Super Mega Baseball, but you know, maybe you want a guy like Hammer Long Ballo to not be on uh, what are they, the ham stakes or the beef stakes? Maybe you want them on like the underdogs or the nemesis, right? So that's where Shuffle Draft would come in because it basically takes all the teams, empties their rosters, and then you just shuffle draft. It's like a fantasy draft, is pretty much what it is, and you can do that for just the Super Mega League. You can do that for just the MLB Legends League, or you can do that with a custom league that you've created and create your own mixture of rosters, however you like. So lots of cool customization there with Shuffle Draft and how you decide to set up your franchise mode and your season mode. Uh, and then also, speaking of customization, I did notice a couple more things. It looks like we can pick the sounds for uh, homes, or homes, <laughs> runs being scored. Uh, strikeouts and stolen bases those can all be customized to your liking and uh you know depending on the team so that's pretty cool too and that's it for this breakdown i mean pretty pretty straightforward that's how i try and keep it i'll be back of course when they post more deep dives and more information on the game and uh, obviously for a review too i haven't decided what i'm buying it on probably pc but it's like playing on the switch you know like on the go if i'm on a plane or like on the subway or something like that that seems really enticing uh, but I'll probably get it on PC because I'm going to want that uh, those graphics and the, and the nice refresh rate. But anyways, uh, stick around. Stay tuned to the channel. Hope you like the video. Stay safe out there. And until next time, peace.